get some church. <laughs> Don went ahead and opened us with prayer, a special prayer for Carol. I uh, just want to make sure that um, we all keep her in our thoughts and prayers. And we'll, I will repeat it again during our time of um, prayer requests. But keep her in mind. I opened my handle and it says sweet hour prayer. So is that one okay? Okay. 
Okay. Uh, as far as announcements go, nothing. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'd like to celebrate the the fact that Trudy and I's brother came today to church. Yay! Yay. His, his name is Byron McCall. Byron McCall. We're so pleased. Before. Okay. What was his name again? Byron. Byron. Yeah. 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 He's the one that has uh, four bar cancer. Okay. Four. Yeah. He's just trying to top everybody else. Yes. Yeah. Wait a minute. Ten. Four bar cancer. Ten. Ten. Four. Ten. This morning, that's my big story. It's been a weird morning. They have, they, we've had guest lay readers, I guess, lay people doing the message on Sunday. So today, I'm supposed to sing a solo. I knew I had to be out here. Don's singing out here, so I'm supposed to sing like a quarter till ten. She stands up, goes up to the podium. And she's a, an attorney, so I knew it was going to be long. And 25 minutes later, she just kind of stops and turns around and she says, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot Nancy. <laughs> so, it's been a strange morning. I, I told her, dear, I need Did you tell her? Is that who told her? I knew somebody said something. Where's I'll fly away at? Oh, I can't. Uh, <coughs> is it not in here? Some glad morning. When the flight is oh, that's how, that. okay, yeah. they take it by the first. We'll just, yeah, we can do that. Just throw it out. It's not, yeah. it's not in the book? Yeah, it's not in the book. Oh, bummer. Bummer? You don't know Can you find it, Taylor? I probably yeah. Taylor can do it. Taylor can find it. I got it. There you go. Got it. Got it. Yay. Yeah. Some. 
with his shadows o'er me. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. Here my rapture soul shall find rest beyond the river. Yeah. 
Father, we're here this morning on kind of a crazy morning. Things are mixed up. Things are different. But we're all here for the same reason. We're all here to praise you, to love, to come back to you. Because I know sometimes during the week, we tend to kind of fall away a little bit. This is just a good reminder on Sunday who we are, what we stand for. So... We're also here to talk about and ask and pray about those people and those prayers that are on our hearts. Please, especially this morning, be with Carol. Guide the doctors. Be with her. Let her rest comfortably. And bring her back soon to us, Father, because just looking around, it only takes 30 seconds to realize how much she's missed. I miss her smile and her assurance and that voice that sings with me that I can hear in my left ear. So we're looking forward to her. Be with pastor as, as he has to deal with um, coming here and probably wanting to be in the hospital and wanting to be there close to her, be with Haley, be with all those people who count on her for so many things, her children. And I also ask a special prayer for me as I, I'm on my, I'll be on my fourth day at a public school. It's been difficult not being able to pray with the kids because they all have so many issues. I would just ask that you be with those children that you know, that I know, Father, you're taking care of because no one else does. And I just ask that you be with them. Let me model what a good Christian looks like, sounds like, acts like, and maybe through modeling they will realize it, that you are the way. They'll be those children that will carry the torch. We ask a special prayer for Mary, Mary Nix, and her heart issues. We want please guide the doctors and, and help her in the best ways possible so that she is healthy and ready to go back to her um, activities, whatever it is that she loves to do, be with Bill and Selena and others who depend on her. Thank you that Dan's here again this morning. Continue to be with him and improve his health as, as it is your will, Father. He's a bright spot in our congregation. We appreciate his being here. We know that without you, maybe he wouldn't be. So we thank you for those things. And please, Father, let everyone in here be those models, be those people who let young people know that this is the place to be on Sunday. That they have someone who loves them no matter what. No matter what they've done, no matter what they will do, that he is there for them and he loves them exactly the way they are because he's the one who made them. He knows every hair on their head. And so I would ask that you would help us guide those children, those young people. Also be with Trey and all the people in his family, those here in church, his family, um, grant him healing, help the doctors, guide them on this um, disease. I know it's a difficult one for doctors, but we know you're the great healer. Also be with Mark's family. He's now with you, Father, in a better place. Be with anyone and everyone who know 
clothes him, loves him, and grant them peace. We come before you now, praying the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Can we sing page 650? Sure. Oh, it's one I know.
like that, but uh, God's good. Amen. All the time. All the time. God's good. God's good. Amen. Amen. You know, I think of a day like today without uh, Carol being here and so on, uh, that we'd still be blessed. Even though things aren't exactly the way we want them to be, we can still be blessed. How many like the way the world is today? How many like the way our country is today? How many feel blessed? Yes. Uh, how can you be blessed in troubled times like we're in today? Well, in the book of Psalm, chapter 15, first three verses I want to bring out. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? When I first read that first verse there, I thought, well, who will be in heaven? But this is not really talking about heaven. It's not talking, when it talks about his tabernacle, his holy hill, what I'm seeing, seeing in it is, Lord, who shall abide in thy presence? Is God present in your life all the time? Or just on Sunday morning? Or just once in a while? Or is he present all the time? Now, God is three omnis, which omni, the word omni means all. He's all powerful, he's all-knowing, and he's all-present. So anywhere you're at, Dave, uh, David put it like this, he said, I don't care if I put my bed in hell or in heaven or wherever I'm at, God is there. Okay? So, we have to realize, in order to be blessed, we have to realize the presence of God in our life. And God comes to our life when we're born again, and he stays there. He does never leaves us. Sometimes we kind of turn our back on him, try to go in the wrong way, but he never leaves us or forsakes us, and he never lets us down. He never fails. He's always faithful. And when I'm faithless, he remains faithful. And I thank you for that. And so how can I know that I'm in his presence? You know, I mean, we can't, we don't live by feelings, we live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Okay? Does your faith tell you that no matter where I'm at, what I'm doing, God is present? So if I'm doing something wrong, guess what? He sees us doing it. He knows we're doing it. And he knows that we, actually, I believe this. I believe he knows what we're going to do before we do it. He knows what we're going to say before we say it. But he allows us to use our free will to do his will or our own will. But when I do my will, that's when I fail and I fall short of glory. I must be walking in his will. I must <laughs> realize that at all times I'm in his presence. And who, who shall abide? Who shall be in his presence? Well, for a student helps us. He that walketh uprightly. You know what it means to walk uprightly? It means that you're walking in total obedience to his word. Ten commandments, the commandments of the new. You know there's at least eleven commandments. How many do that? Jesus was teaching his disciples one day and he said, I give unto you a new commandment that you love one another. And that's so important in these times, in these days, that we love one another. So as you walk uprightly, as you're walking in his love and his will and his way. And who else? And he that worketh righteousness. You work with your hands, right? Does your mind know what your hand's doing? At all times? Does your heart know? Does God know? Is God leading what your hands are doing? And he that speaks
speaketh truth in his heart. Now, I'm not asking for a show of hands, of course, but how many of us, us here today have told some kind of maybe a little white lie in the last year? Probably most all of us have some kind, some way, stretched the truth. But we don't call it a lie, we just call it stretching the truth. You know, and but we all we all sin to fall short of the glory of God. We know that. But here's one that hit me right square in the face. Who abides in his tabernacle or in his presence? He that backbiteth not. I'm not asking again for show of hands, but how many of you said evil about somebody else? That's backbiting. Unless you say it right to their face. And uh, yeah, and I've been guilty of that. I admit that. But God does forgive. Thank God for that. Uh, nor doeth evil to his neighbor. Uh, who's, who's your neighbor?
I can't honor him. You can you honor the physician? See what I'm saying? You must. You know, like a pastor of a church. Some people cannot honor the man, but you must honor the physician. And uh, that's according to God's word. But uh, anyway, so seeking his constantly, Jesus called the disciples. <coughs> Said in Matthew chapter 5, starting verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into the mountain, and when he was set, <coughs> the disciples came to him. Now, this servant on the mount, they think thousands heard it, I don't know. He said, The disciples came to him up on the mountain there, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Now what I want to do, I'm going to go through some of these, and I want you to stop and think. Do I fit in one of these categories? Okay? Uh, he said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Anybody know what that means? When you're poor in spirit, doesn't mean you're poor, wretched person. It means you're humble. God's dealing with humility a lot in some of these verses. He said, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Now, we've all mourned over lost loved ones and so on. But let me add this to it. How many of you mourn when you sin and fall short of the glory of God? You mourn for yourself. You should. Very sorry, very upset, very sad that we fail God. And he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Then he said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, which is humility again, for they shall inherit the earth. Meek does not mean weak. Okay? This means humility, being humble. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. How do you hunger and thirst after righteousness? Being in the Word of God. Being in prayer. Walking in obedience to His Word. But you have to know what His Word says before you walk in obedience to it. I always like to use an example. <clears throat> uh, when my kids were little and growing up, that we didn't want them jumping up and down on the bed. Number one, they could slip, fall, and hurt themselves. Two, they could be hurt in the bed. And we couldn't afford to be buying beds. So, uh, but I couldn't punish them unless they knew they could weren't supposed to jump on the bed. So if I caught them jumping on the bed, I had to give them warning. And then if they did it again, they caught them doing it again, then I could be tried to punish them. And uh, that's what I was going to say to you folks when you asked me why Carol was in the hospital. I said, well, she smarted off once too often. <laughs> but you all know better than that, don't you? <laughs> you know who would be in the hospital. <laughs> hungry and thirst after righteousness or you just want to live life week to week, day by day but you really hungry and thirst after righteousness blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy do you realize what it means to be merciful to one another does that mean you totally forgive That's what God does with us. By his great mercy. He's forgiven me. I, I think of all the things that I've done in the past. And everyone, everything I've pretended of, God has totally, 100%, forgiven me. The problem is, I sometimes have a hard time forgiving myself. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that. Okay, you apologize for it, you ask forgiveness, you go on. Don't dwell on what done or said in the past. That's taken care of. Uh, Christ took all of these things on himself on the cross. Blessed are 
of the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. Well, I kind of look upon myself not bragging the whole way, but as a peacemaker. I've had people in the church that other people didn't care about, didn't like, and would come to me and ask me to get rid of that person. Maybe the person asked me to get rid of them should have been the one to get rid of them. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and I, and I prayed, and I said, Lord, no, it's not my place to do that. I said, if I need to, I'll talk to them, minister with them. But otherwise, you take care of them. And he usually does. Well, always does, actually. Blessed are they which are persons righteousness sake. Being persecuted is one thing. Being persecuted for righteousness sake is another. That's what Paul was doing. Constantly put in prison, beaten, and shipwrecked and all kinds of stuff, all because he was walking righteously. That's why he could say one at one time, follow me. Did you say that about you? You follow me and you'll be going the right direction. And we honestly, truly say that about ourselves. Paul could. If you walk behind Paul, you'd be following Jesus. He followed him right letter, and he suffered for it many times. Uh, blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. I think probably a lot of us have experienced that maybe one time or so in our life where somebody spoke evil against you. Uh, that's why you need to, as it says in Timothy, to have a good report about yourself. Have a good name. Uh, and if you all, if you're blessed in all these areas or some of these areas, and they realize then you can rejoice and be exceeding and glad, for great is your salvation. No, your reward. In heaven. See, when Jesus died on the cross, he took your sins and my sins on himself. And when I said yes to him, I was born again. I got saved. And I no longer have to worry about my salvation. He's taken care of that on the cross. And all I have to do is receive it for myself. Okay? He said, uh, Rejoice, be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they prophets which are before you. A lot of people have been persecuted in this world because of their stand for Jesus Christ. I've often wondered, uh, that in this day and age, there could come a day when I am told I cannot preach against abortion, I cannot preach against homosexuality, I can't, cannot preach against certain things that are a sin, uh, and if I do, I can be put in jail. Would I stand firm on my convictions, or would I give in to stay out of jail? I, I can't honestly tell you. I'm hoping that I'll be able to stand firm on my convictions. But who kind of, what kind of people are we? He goes on to tell us that we're the salt of the earth. Now, <clears throat> are there certain foods that you eat that you really want? You've got to have salt on them. And some foods you can get by without. I watched people when we had the restaurant for 26 years there. I observed people, and their food would come to it. Be breakfast, lunch, dinner. And before they even tasted anything, they grabbed the salt shaker and did this. And maybe the pepper shaker and did that. You know, because they wanted that salt. Now, there's certain things like, I, I like my sliced tomatoes. I like salt on that. I like salt on my uh, watermelon. I can eat eggs without salt. A lot of people can't do that. But we all 
why we're called the salt of the earth. But if we lost our savor, if we can salt, try to salt the earth with the gospel of Jesus Christ, but we don't do it the right way, that salt has lost its favor, savor, and uh, people aren't going to be drawn. You know how people are drawn to Jesus Christ? He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. We don't have that drawing power. When Ray preaches, he don't have that drawing power. I don't have that drawing power. But Jesus does. Only Jesus does. And we're also the light of the world. Are we shining brightly out there for the Lord? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Am I doing what he wants me to do? So, we're supposed to let our light shine before men. Okay? So, number one, be humble. Mourn for your sin. And spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let your light so shine. And I ask uh, Help us, Lord, to live a life that shows you in us and not ourselves. We thank you for this time that we have in your word. And we ask you to be with us now in these holy moments. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Uh, I don't have the song picked out. Does anybody?
with just as I am, just as we are, just as we always hope we can be there doing what we know you want us to do. And we know we fall short at times, Father, but we thank you so much for those times when we realize that it can get help through your grace, through your grace that led your son to die on the cross. We ask that each person in the pews here at Mapleton Church be blessed this week. We ask that all their families be blessed with good health. Please be with those, again, that we pray for in our private prayers. We ask all these things in God's name as we head out into the world, telling others, repeating it over and over, that he is Lord. Amen. Amen.